I wanted to give a, a kind of a general overview about the church plan in Nigeria for a Calvary Chapel that I was involved in. And uh, if you've read my testimony, you can uh, get a little more information there and read my newsletters. But um, basically, I, I met a Nigerian in Bible college in Hungary and uh, just said that we'd go and, and start a church. And uh, there was no Calvary Chapel there before. So I um, felt like we should start the first one. So we set out to do that, and uh, there was a team of 10 that came with us at first, and then um, it was left just the, the two of us. And um, initially I was there for less than four months and had to wait for about another half a year, over half a year, uh, for the church to get registered before I could come back and stay more permanently. I was there about six years total. Um, so when we got there, for me, it was you know, quite a culture shock. It's a, a very hot place, and um, you know, it's a third world country, so uh, it's not very industrialized, even though we were in the capital city. But most people don't live in, in the, the main part of the city, you know, like Seattle. You drive in and out. But um, so our church was in the outskirts of the city and uh, kind of the poor neighborhood, and we just rented a hotel, and we just watched it grow from a few people to, um, you know, over 70 to 100 <clears throat> people. And we just had a small room that could barely hold 50, but we actually packed 70 in there. And uh, we ended up getting, you know, an overflow, having people outside and set up a projector and stuff outside. And uh, God eventually provided to get our own land and our own building. So it's really miraculous uh, if you want to read the history of that. But uh, the culture is very interesting because, you know, majority of the people, I'd say over 90% believe in some sort of religion. Uh, most of those is Christian and Muslim, about 50% Muslim. The Christian population though is really divided. There's um, a lot of prosperity doctrine going on. There's Mah uh, Mormons, Jehovah's Witness, and just about any, every other religion you can think of there. Um, and they lump those all into Christian. So when I say Christian, mm, not really. Now you'll be amazed and you won't believe me if I say it, but there's literally churches every hundred feet or so there. Uh, on the one street where our church was, there was at least five churches in a half mile stretch. So there's a lot of churches there, but not a lot of them really teaching the Bible. And so we went there to, to really teach the Bible to the people. Um, so the conditions, like I said, are poor. You know, a lot of people don't have running water. I would say most people don't have any form of running water. They will draw it from a well. <clears throat> a lot of people don't have bathrooms. Um, they don't have even a kitchen, they just cook over a little stove, and we actually did that for many years, even though we were fortunate to get our own apartment. Um, you know, people ride around in motorcycles, you know, basically dirt bikes, but that's what they use for a lot of transportation. You have someone driving it, and then you get on the back. That's kind of like your taxi, so you see them going back and forth all over the place. And um, they do have, you know, taxis there, but uh, the cars are not in good condition. And most people can't afford them. Although there is a lot of traffic going to and from town every day, because that's where the jobs are. Um, so people are fortunate enough to have a job. <clears throat> so we would ride on these bad roads to church on bikes every, almost every day. Sometimes a couple times a day, because many times we would forget something, have to come back, and it was you know, at least a, a 10 or 15 minutes each way to do that. <clears throat> Later in the ministry, we were able to get a car and uh, eventually each get our own car. So that was a blessing, but that was not until really the last year or so. But um, it's just amazing to watch God God provide. So witnessing there uh, was very different because everyone has a belief already. So it's very hard to build on a belief, you know, tell someone to believe something else when they already have a belief system in place. It's like trying to build a house on top of a house. It just doesn't work. So you have to go and take down the house first before you can build up. And um, people have been told all these lies throughout the years, you know, just like many people here are told evolution. Uh, no one believes evolution in Africa. and Everyone knows that, that there's a God. 
but uh, there their problem is they believe in prosperity doctrine. They think that if they get enough money, they're going to be happy, and that's the answer to life, which um, is not true, as America is finding out right now. Um, but to witness to people, you have to know the culture, because there's at least four or five main languages, not to say the hundred or so other languages that are there. So, and then you have to know who you're talking to. Is this a Muslim, a Christian? What's their belief? And so I've learned, you know, uh, pointed questions to ask people to find out what they're about. And, you know, people like uh, Jehovah's Witness uh, and Mormons, they're actually quite similar. They won't take a track. Um, they like to argue, but they won't listen to you. Um, they believe in Jesus, but they don't believe he's the Son of God. Um, you know, there's um, people who are still into the traditional you know, type of religion where they believe in voodoo and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's very strange some of the things that you will, you will see or hear about there. Um, so you have to find out who you're talking to and then talk to them. But I found one of the, the main ways to witness to them talk about uh, the eternal riches that we'll have in, in heaven because uh, they're seeking riches. But uh, the problem is that's why that many of them go to church. And when they see they're not getting actual money, uh, most of them leave. But uh, we still tried to teach them, you know, the, the real valuable, the eternal lasting riches is, is the Word of God, the Bible. So when going about and talking to people, some people, you know, look really mean or scary. But when you actually go and talk to them, you know, they'll really lighten up. And uh, some, some teams that have come have said that, you know, you know don't worry about them. It says in Jeremiah, don't be afraid of their faces. Just go and talk to them, and they'll lighten up. And uh, you know, I'll even thank you for preaching the gospel. I've never been attacked there. Only one time I've had someone yell at me, a Muslim guy. But uh, usually, this, you know, the worst that will happen is that man, they may laugh at you or um, you know, just shoo you away. But you know, I've never had any real big problems. And <clears throat> um, so that's an encouragement, anyways. That uh, if you're just think about going out for evangelism and you're worried. You can do it. If I can do it, you know, anyone can do it. And that's what I always like to say. Because I'm my background is uh, I'm a Trekkie nerd, computer programmer, and uh, so shy I never talk to anyone. And God was able to use me to, to witness to people and be involved in missions. So you can do it too. So I hope this is an encouragement to you. And again, if you want more detail, go and read the monthly newsletters. They're there for the past six years.